in honor of women's empowerment, have you guys been getting the challenges? Um, beautiful, strong, energized women are supporting each other and posting pictures in black and white. So I think I'll do the leader live cast in black and white right now. So welcome. It is um, July 28th. It's Tuesday. We're doing this at 1130. I'm sorry, 1230 in the morning on a Tuesday instead of a Thursday. And guess what? We're being joined by a friend in Dubai. So that's cool. And it's 1130 her time. Isn't that nice? Let's see if she's there. All right. Go live. There she is. Okay. Catherine Moore will be joining us. Now, Catherine is um, a figure in the spa industry. She's absolutely known. I'm here. I'm hey, here. There you are. Great. <laughs> How about that? It's 11.30 and you look fresh <laughs> as a daisy. Look at that. Yep. Yeah, well, I'm trying. Trying my best. <laughs> That's what we all do. Listen, I wanted to review your uh, background a little bit. I think yeah. uh, going through your LinkedIn, I saw so many cool things. You started as a spa director at Hilton on the Park in Melbourne. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and then you, is true. You went, you went on to rep two product companies. You next became spa director for the Man Mandara Spa in Thailand. Who a hint, yeah. right? In Thailand. So, yeah. And then you um, were a spa director at M Spa in Thailand before starting Spa Connectors. So you know what that yeah. tells me, Catherine, that you had your feet in the fire. Before you started this yeah. firm that helps people connect and find the right employee, yeah. You feel yeah. their pain, right? Tell me if I'm right yes, about that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So uh, when I moved overseas from Australia, I started working for Minor Hotel Group, which had Mandara, Anantara. Uh, we had 65 spas around the world. I was based in Bangkok, but I traveled everywhere, uh, opening spas, looking after existing spas. Um, and I guess saw a need for good talent, good training, good mindsets. Um, yeah. And yeah, started Spark Connectors five years ago. And you know, one thing also, I'm Kim Marshall, by the way, I'm the founder, <laughs> co-founder of Swell Public Relations and the host of the Global Women's Summit podcast. But we do these live casts to speak with leaders in the industry, as you know. And one thing, although it's the Global Wellness Summit, it is headquartered in America. So I always love getting that global perspective. So you're there facing Asia and the Middle East. Tell us what's been going on with COVID and how it affected the spa industry. Yeah, it, it's been a challenge. And, and look, I think we, we, we're very lucky to be able to see what's going on globally. Uh, my team is all over the world, um, but it, it does allow us to look and see what's happening in, in all parts of the world. And me being here in Dubai, um, I'm at the forefront of... I guess um, a lot of challenges in terms of staff being let go, um, a lot of managers being without uh, positions now. It, everything's coming back to normal in Dubai here. We're all back working. Uh, we have to have masks on, uh, social distancing, but everything is open again. And we still have 400 cases a day. So it's not like COVID has disappeared. Wow. Uh, but they, they're really insistent that the economy is happening and so forth. So we're all back uh, trying to make it work. And I'm seeing, I guess it's an increase in business, but it's summer here. It's 45 degrees every day. Most times, yeah, it's hot. What is that? Most what times... is that in Fahrenheit? Is that 110? <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. 100 <laughs> and something. It's, it's bloody hot. <laughs> okay. Sorry to, to swear, but it's hot. Um, you don't want to go outside. People generally leave uh, Dubai at this time of the year and they go elsewhere, but they can't leave at the moment because of travel restrictions and so forth. So there are a lot of people here. They're doing staycations. Um, spas are busy on weekends. Uh, salons, clinics, they're starting to see a pickup. So that's certainly helpful for the industry here. But we're sort of just getting on with it and, and COVID's here and we're living with it, essentially. Wow. So it's wow. interesting, yeah. But you saw a lot of longtime executives lose their positions. And I think you told yeah. me that when the shutdown happened, you know, most practitioners, and they are called 
uh, what are they called? Beauty professionals? Is that what they're called? Even if you're well, an esthetician or a massage therapist, is that true? Yeah. So um, whether they're a massage therapist, a spa therapist, a, a beauty therapist, a esthetician, um, dermal therapist, I mean, we have all of them here because there's just so many different categories of operations here. We've got clinics that are essentially medi spas um, that have nurses that are offering laser treatments. Uh, we have then laser technicians that are coming from uh, different parts of the world to be able to offer, you know, really amazing uh, facial treatments. We've got therapists coming from Asia that do amazing massages. We've got uh, people coming from everywhere <coughs> doing everything, but so many that are being um, let go, sadly, because uh, we didn't have a lot of government support, sadly, uh, like a lot of countries have had support. Um, businesses here have had to let people go. So, yeah, we saw uh, a big increase uh, in people reaching out, wanting support and jobs and so forth. And so for us as a company, we decided that we would really be looking after the people on the ground um, rather than focusing on helping businesses get through COVID because so many of our colleagues help do that. And that we have some amazing colleagues out there that have created incredible programs to help support businesses through COVID. We thought, okay, let's work with people on the ground and see what we could do to be able to support them. So Catherine, what you're saying then is there, how many spas would you say are in Dubai alone? I mean, you talk to oh, Asia, you talk to London, God. but are there a like thousand? 200? Look, a thousand? No, no, it's oh. probably like a thousand spas in salons. I think we're looking at a couple of thousand um, within the UAE um, GCC alone. There's yeah thousands and thousands of spas <laughs> and clinics in one road alone here. There's a, a clinic uh, as in a medi spa on every corner. So it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, crazy. it's a saturated market. Yeah. So what you're saying is there weren't the government like unemployment checks and that sort of things to support these uh, hourly workers that were just out. They were out of work, right, when it shut down. And have you seen they've hired most of them back or just a percentage or what's been? Um, there were quite a few that got left uh, on leave without pay and then have been brought back. Uh, but there are quite a few businesses that have closed down. Wow. Well, I see then. Tell us, you also have, before we get to the solution you've brought, you've um, organized. <laughs> Tell yeah. us what experience you have in doing events. We know you have on the ground management, hotel, all of that. But what about events? What events have you been involved in for those of us who don't know you? Okay. So, well, starting Spa Connectors, we were very much into consulting, recruitment, training globally, working with a lot of the big hotel groups, standalone spas, clinics, wellness centers, and so forth. And I got involved with professional beauty and world spa and wellness. So I started um, working with PB in Dubai, Professional Beauty in Dubai. Uh, Which is a trade exhibition. show? It's a trade show? Yeah, trade show. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. um, and uh, probably now, two and a half years ago, I started uh, curating the World Spa and Wellness Convention, which is London, Dubai and Phuket. So I pull together the content and the speakers uh, for the conferences in those countries. Um, which is great. I mean, I love it because I, what I, I guess I thrive on is being able to find um, new and interesting uh, concepts and speakers and being able to then bring them to our audience. And our audience is uh, spa managers, directors, operators, um, owners, and so forth. So, yeah, for me, it's about being able to say, you know, what are we doing in the industry that's a bit different and how can we bring that to the forefront? Well, I first uh, noticed you. Uh, what are those awards in London every year? You know, I live in LA. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's World Spa and Wellness. Yeah, World yeah, Spa yeah. and Wellness. There were you know, there were my friends Mia Kirikos and Jean Guy and everybody all dressed up yeah. in tuxes and gowns and winning awards, right? So you saw the popularity of that, and when you saw all these practitioners out of work, what? How did you come up with the Hall of Wellness Awards? Uh, so, tell us what they are. Yeah, so I'd been thinking about doing some awards for a few years. Um, actually, honestly, more so from a business perspective, because 
for our recruitment part of the business. I could uncover talent and see what was happening. Uh, but I also was a firm believer that we needed to recognize talent within our industry. And I felt like there was just so many people out there doing great things that we didn't really know about. And the same yeah. people were getting recognized over and over. And then uh, during COVID, when we were focusing on the people on the ground, so you know, the therapists, the managers, the technicians, the yoga practitioners, everyone, um, I, I realized that we couldn't get, get them jobs right now because there wasn't a lot out there. And we were sharing content. We were sharing webinars that everyone was doing globally. We were doing yeah. online training. We helped them with CVs, et cetera. But I thought, you know, what can we do right now that could really help them? And, and it started off with the idea of doing some awards where we would recognize talent. And for me, it was about being able to then share their stories and acknowledge that they've put so much time into their careers to get them to the place where they were now and that they weren't expendable, that they weren't just a, a commodity that essentially we could let go of when our you know, businesses started to fail. And I do get it. I mean, it's challenging right now. Not everyone has the cash to sustain a business, but right. we, we kind of look upon um, these people in our industry as the fact that we can let them go and then just find other people to replace them at some point. And, these people actually put years and years into honing their craft. And so for me, I was sort of, it, it really upset me because I know the stories behind these people because we place them and we train them and we see what they put into it. And it doesn't also then, I guess, we're wanting great people and we're growing our industry and it's worth you know trillions of dollars now, but we're not necessarily rewarding or recognising when people put money into their own education or in, in proof their talents or whatever, we don't pay them any extra. We don't say that they're, they're amazing or what have you. And this is a global thing. It's not just in the Middle East. So I sort of thought, you know, what can we actually do to be able to give back to these people? And I thought, you know, an awards that just recognize individuals would be something that would be quite cool. We've got great awards out there. I'm involved in them. I'm a, a judge for a lot of them. I've seen and that, they, yeah. Yeah, well, they, they recognise businesses, and we do need that, absolutely. But to be able to recognise these individuals and say, hey, you know, show us your story and tell us what brought you to where you are, I think that's something that we so need to see. And so well, me... we thought, okay... Sorry. Let me tell you, to validate what you're saying, I was involved with Vladdy in Paris in the hotel and spa. Yeah, before, she, she does an amazing spa. job. Yeah, mm. at the George Sank. It was so fun and did a few panels a number of years. And the first year I went, I think it went three years, I don't know. But the first year I went, I noticed this girl win spa director of the year. Her name's Erica, and she's Italian. And I was like, who's that? And you know, from the time she won, her life changed. She had so many career opportunities. Totally. Her profile yes. grew so much. I, yes. I consider her one of my wonderful friends in Europe now, but she's at Borgo Ignazia, the last time I checked, which is a magical place. So I see here for your Hall of Wellness Awards, the launch, here's some of the categories. Global Therapist of the Year, Global mm -hmm. Director and Manager, Personality Contributor to the Industry, Global Hair Personality, mm -hmm. Global Wellness Personality, Rising star. Now, let me show you something. I'm trying this. If it fails, I am sorry. But here is one of the images you shared uh, for the, so that's a wonderful, probably, you know, beauty, makeup, nail kind of idea. Who's this gorgeous guy? What's he supposed to be? I don't know, but he's cute. Isn't he cute? <laughs> Who knows? Now, yeah. Why did you have nurses in your category as well? Because uh, they, they, they do a lot of the um, therapy uh, in parts of the world. So doing your laser technician, cause in terms of having the actual accreditation to be able to use lasers, um, IVs, all those sorts of things, you need to have a, a nursing accreditation in a lot of countries. So See, yeah, that's we, something we employ a lot know. of nurses. Yeah. 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 And, so, you know, People are specializing, you know, they might be a nurse and then they decide they want to specialize in aesthetics. Um, and some of their careers are taking off in doing IV, specialized laser, laser facials um, throughout uh, Europe, uh, UK, uh, Middle East. It's, it, you know, they're really doing very well for themselves.
And also in through COVID, you know, we see toys are being made of frontline workers, right? So medical personnel are the heroes of the whole situation. So mm. anyway, um, I also see that you're going to do regional awards, Middle East, Asia, Europe, UK, Oceania, America, the Americas, Africa for student, uh, beauty, yeah. aesthetic therapist, nail technician, hair personality, yeah. lash technician, yeah. makeup artist, yeah. fitness, yeah. yoga. Now, this is important because normally it's their bosses, right? Who get Yes, the exactly. Yes, exactly. And we just felt like there are so many people that you know, hold our industry together that don't have a chance to be recognized that now is the time. Even the, a host or an attendant in a spa or salon or clinic or what have you, like why shouldn't they be recognized for the hard work they put in? In a right. lot of times they're working, you know, 12 hours a day, uh, six days a week. It's It's crazy. So... We really wanted to make sure that we were able to recognize uh, people globally in all positions, um, sales and business development managers. Like wow. where has anyone ever been recognized who's a distributor that is a gun salesperson that is really helping to push a brand globally? We don't yeah. say, hey, these people are amazing. I, I suppose um, they, I guess employee, employers don't want to lose their uh, their gun sales people to the competition but we do need to globally recognize people and and so we, we created these awards and i guess um we started them with the idea of just recognizing people and then we decided that actually when we started raising money for the sponsorship that what we should be doing is creating um, something a little bit more meaningful to the whole awards. And so we've created a scholarship fund that puts the money that we raise into a fund that then is able to upskill any individual. So it's not the winners of the awards. It's any individual in the industry that wants to put their hand up and say, I want to have uh, this sort of training. I, perhaps I want to do an online spa management course. Perhaps I want to do my SIDTAC uh, accreditation in Bali or Thailand or India or Mexico or wherever you are. Um, we want to be able to fund that and we want to be able to fund that with the money that we raise in this scholarship fund and hence also acting as a stimulus into the industry to try and keep some of these training uh, schools alive uh, because the support businesses in our industry are really going to be in trouble. Uh, operations are going okay, but essentially we're going to have trouble in keeping some of these support uh, businesses alive. So we, we want these individuals in our industry to understand how important it is to upskill themselves and to educate themselves. And they might not have the money right now, um, but we want them to see that once they have essentially upskilled themselves what it can then do to their careers because they all need to have career trajectory. It's not just about being a therapist forever, forever. or being yeah. in the same role. It's like saying you have a future. We can create something for you that is the more than what you've ever imagined. And I think it's up to us in the industry to all pull together to really be able to create something um, because I, I just don't feel like we give enough to the people that are actually on the ground. We all, yeah. you know, we, we run our businesses, some make some great money. Um, it is a tough industry, but we are doing quite well. So now it's time to be able to give back to these people that- That really make it happen. Yeah, exactly. You know, in writing, we do a lot of content writing and we do a lot of storytelling. And the thing I always cling to is content is king. Well, the content of a great spa experience or wellness experience is the practitioner who touches you, exactly. right? So if you don't support yep. that, you could have the shine. I'll never forget. I worked at the Grand Mileo on Maui where they had like, I don't know, sparkling fountains and islands in the distance and palm trees and oh my God. And they kind of did a hula on your back. But when you were getting the treatment, your head was down. It was only the magic between you and that therapist. And that's yep. what really sells, right? So- I've had, I've talked, worked with spas that are like in the basement of a little hotel with no view. And yet their therapists were so good. Yeah. We just worked with one yeah. this week that has moved their treatment rooms outside in cabanas in the parking lot to be safe. 
and yet magic <laughs> still happens, right? So, yeah. Catherine, tell us how people can, you know, nominate someone, nominate themselves. How can they yeah. be a judge? What are those directions? Yeah. So, look, it's very, very easy. So we've used a great uh, platform called Award Force which automates everything. Um, you can nominate yourself, but you can also nominate others. And it's very easy. You just log in, pop in who you think is worthy of an award and why. Um, and then it just sends a, an email over to them. And, and all they need to do is start filling in the details. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, what we're trying to do also is to share stories. And so part of the judging process is that they need to do a video of themselves that is showing why they should win and why they should be part of it. And we will then share that content. And, and what I want to do with this content is really to show the world the sort of people that we have working in our industry. And, you know, an example that I've been using lately is when you look at the UK, um, recently they allowed hairdressing to open again, but not spas and salons. And right. we saw that the, in parliament, the, the prime minister and his cronies were laughing and making fun of our industry and essentially saying that it was a bit of a hobby for women that like to lunch or whatever, but it, they, they didn't quite, I guess, realize that our industry contributed to $30 million to the, actually, no, I think it might be $30 billion sorry, uh, $30 billion to the UK economy. Um, and they're not taking it seriously. So if we're able to raise some exposure or um, I guess just let people see what's happening within our industry and realise that there's the, the people behind it uh, that are on the ground, but also the people that are running the businesses and so forth, we might be able to get a little bit more, I guess, um, credibility and understanding to what we're trying to do. Because it, it's not okay that they're not giving us the time that they perhaps give to some other industries that they deem perhaps more, um, I don't know. <laughs> well, more respected. Someone just wrote respected. this. Catherine. Respected. Someone just wrote this. As someone with chronic illness, my acupuncturist and massage therapist make the biggest difference in my life. And this yeah. is what we really yeah. need to get across. I've been fighting it my entire career to be taken seriously. And, you know, um, the person we work with in San Diego that moved his treatments outside, it's called the not stop. He said, you know, people certainly get a muscular release from all the tension, but we've had lots of clients cry on the table because there's yeah, so that's... much anxiety and tension built up. And sure, COVID is a huge threat. We know that. But so is anxiety, mental illness, loneliness. These are all diseases yeah. of, you know, the 21st century. Oh. So we really need to help yeah. each other. And by elevating the practitioners and promoting them as almost, you know, yeah. coping, coping mechanisms, essential yeah. workers in that way, right? No, absolutely. But even um, the feeling that you get after you've had a blow dry or your nails done or what have you, you know, how does that make you feel mentally? I don't know. I, mean, I haven't had be... one in so long. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it may just be a silly little thing, but essentially it can make someone feel better. And so I, I just think that we don't put enough attention into these things. So um, for me, um, paying attention to our people out there and recognising them is the most important thing. And, and if we can give back in some way. So... As I was saying in answer to your question, we, th there's obviously the sponsorship from a monetary perspective, but also we've had so many brands um, that are out there uh, helping us with donating um, scholarships, mentorships, uh, internships, training. Uh, it's been incredible. So I know that it's a really tough time for our industry right now. And uh, not everyone has the financial means to be able to donate in, in terms of, of, of cash. Um, so what we're saying is that if you're able to contribute and give something in the way of, a, a, of a, some sort of training course that can upskill someone within the industry, that would be amazing. And well, we're you know, being inundated. Well, Catherine, you're teaching us a lot. You say 
I, I'm going to start saying up train and I'm going to say gun sales. Upskill, upskill, yeah. Upskill yeah. and gun sales means you sell really well, I would guess. <laughs> you get out of the park or something. Okay, I get that. All right, so let's be really clear before we have to go, Catherine. If people yeah. want to get involved in the Hall of Wellness Awards and nominate yeah. someone that really deserves it, that's been having a tough time but is so skilled and could help people, the lymphatic system, their self-image, yeah. all of it, where do they go? Yeah. What's the website? So it's it's hallofwellnessawards.com. Oh, that's easy. That's easy. Yeah, Every, everything's there. You can nominate. You can check out our sponsor stuff. You can see all our sponsors. We also have an ambassador program. We have a great media partner program. Uh, we have associations from the industry globally supporting us. It's incredible. Like I'm I'm blown away with the amount of support that we've had. Okay, um, well, well, we've got a lot of people yeah. joining. I just wanted to say right now, um, mm. what can, what do you think? I mean, this, what's the timeline? You're going, going to yeah. have the event on December 4th, where? Yeah, yeah. So we've got another two months of nominations, the uh, time frame for nominations. So uh, heaps of time for everyone to get in and to either nominate themselves or their colleagues. We then have two months for our judging uh, process. We have a great panel of judges, uh, global judges that are industry experts, and we're going to shake it up yearly. So this is going to be a yearly event, mm -hmm. and it's going to be—it's it, going to remain being very much a CSR event. I've decided uh, because I think we it's don't know what that means. What's a CSR? Well, uh, co sorry, corporate—it's a bit of a jargon uh, that's used around corporate social responsibility. Oh, okay. So it's something that everyone, uh, all of the big corporates have a bit of a budget that they um, are able to put into their uh, philanthropy. So um, we are going to keep it along those lines. And our vision and our mission is very much about being able to give back to the people on the ground and the individuals within our industry. Yeah, and uh, I imagine that the scholarship fund will probably take on a bit of a life of its own. And people will just continue to donate to that. And I think that would be amazing. And I would like that to lead into internships and different programs that people can join and work with uh, over the years. Um, but in terms of recognising individuals, I'd really like us to be able to uncover talent, look at who's out there uh, in the industry and say, you know, these people are doing some amazing things. It's time that we recognise them and reward them. And let's see okay. if you have if you have a live event in December. We don't know. Maybe it'll have to be virtual. But oh no no um, no uh, no! I've got to tell you about this event. It's going to be really really different. So it's virtual. It's not going to be oh, live. Oh, oh. Um, I've, so what I decided was that I don't want to waste money on a an actual event. Uh, as much as I would love to catch up with everyone and have a, a schmoozy oh. event. Um, I'd rather put any money that we could possibly raise into this whole event. Um, we are having a virtual event that's going to go over 12 hours. So we'll go over all of the time zones. And we are using a platform that is, it's mind blowing. It's hard to get your head around, but it has, it's been developed for virtual events now. And it has all these different, yeah, exactly. It's super cool. So all of these different um uh, breakout rooms and so forth and so we'll have uh, sponsors speaking we'll have the awards we'll have uh, keynote speakers panels uh, and we can have up to apparently a hundred thousand delegates coming online globally to watch it at one time well i yep, see sammy so... Marini just joined i know he'll be there <laughs> hi sammy <laughs> um yeah so you, he's a sponsor uh, so he's one of our gold sponsors. Thank he's you. He's everywhere. Well, um, well, listen. Our is, time is our time is almost up, Catherine. Yeah. But listen, as we said, HallofWellnessAwards.com. We're reaching out yeah. to hug virtually all the on the ground workers, all the therapists, the yeah. yoga practitioners, the fitness instructors, the eyelash yeah. uh, technicians yeah. who make us feel. Everyone. Yeah, right. Yeah. Feel and look so good. So thank you for your efforts in this regard. And everyone listening, get out there and nominate someone, okay? Thank we need you. to support each Kim, other. I know we do, totally. Kim, thank you so much for having us. We're, we're okay. so, so grateful. And everybody thank can tell you. their friends to watch this on the GWS Instagram page. Okay, so Catherine, I'll see you in Dubai. Thank you. See you. Okay. Ciao, Bye. ciao. Thank you.